have a comment recently on this particular video which i made a while back where i compared the share behavior consisting of either a pure share or a simple share and the conclusion was that a pure share is always better however that illustration was only for a 2d system so a recent comment on my channel from a viewer requesting what would be the case for a 3d system and this is why i'm making this video to show you how to apply pure share in 3d rvs let us sit back and relax as we get started with this modeling Hello, my name is Dr. Michael Okreke. Welcome to CM Videos. This is a YouTube channel where we try to help you create effective computational modeling solutions to whatever computational problem that you're dealing with. So this video is part of my Abacus Tips and Tricks series. If you're interested in any kind of videos like this, then there's, these videos are in this playlist for you to use. So the viewer that requested for this video to be made is Satyam Kuma. And basically what he's saying is that if you have a 3D structure, what should I fix for getting the pure shape? And the question is, should I fix the edge? And that got me thinking. I said, okay, it makes sense if I make a video like this. So let's first think about the principle of a pure shape. What is really going on? So we're going to do that first with the 3D system. So let's assume that this is a simple block that's got a length and a width specified just in 2d for a for a start and what you want to do when you want to apply a pure share is that you have to share both sides of the domain so right at the top end you have to apply a deformation in the x direction and also a deformation in the y direction at this other end so that the resulting deformation will be something like this so this region becomes the pure share distorted system okay now if you move on this what would be the equation that describes what you're trying to do and essentially this is the equation so the shear strain in the system the shear strain would be a combination of what's happening at this point and at that point because they overall combine to create the total shear in that domain and so how we're going to calculate that we say half of the deformation in the x direction which is that divided by that so basically what you're looking for is this angle here and then the same thing that angle so when you calculate those angles assuming those angles are quite small then you can end up getting this value as your shear strain so the case study that we're going to study will be just a simple material like this so it's got dimensions of 50 by 50 by 50 there is a simple hole in the center of that material that's got a 10 millimeter in diameter the material will be made of polypropylene and i'm going to apply a 50 percent strain level to that system if this is the kind of content that you like please do subscribe to this channel if you have not already done so so that when content like this are made you'll be the first to see it i also would encourage you to share like and leave me a comment in the comment section of this video of maybe ideas or videos you would like me to make or anything related to the video that interests you so let's get into abacus and begin this modeling here we are in abacus so and this is the model that we're going to be using for for this basically it's a, a square box that already has a hole implemented in it i've also created a material which is a polypropylene material so it's got a modulus of 1.308 gigapascal but because this is in unit of millimeters so it's written this way and this is a poisson ratio and the plasticity of the material is 40 megapascal and i created a section attached to that so a pp section linked to that material so those are basic things now to move into actually setting up this model what we need to do is that we, there are critical regions that will be interesting for for us so this will be the four regions the four faces so what i'm going to do here is to create the x front this will be the x front and i'll just need to hover in front to select that and then the y top so we'll do that for the y top and then we can run around and do everything for the remaining okay so we've created all the sets that we need to apply the loading on the system so then the next thing we need to do is that if we go into the assembly module so we need to introduce two reference points that we're going to use to apply loading onto the system so how what do we need to do first is to find let me find the position of this point and then the position of this other point here so if you basically look at here so we'll see the dimension so i'm going to select this first bit copy ctrl c to copy and then now under the tools i'll create the, ref the reference point so basically i want my reference point to be somewhere along the x axis at this point so the x axis is zero here so if i just do let's say minus maybe 20 so there's a point right at the back there and then i need to do the same with this front end so i'll copy that point again and then i'll paste it here 
so here i'm looking at a value that will be somewhere in this point so again it's the x-axis so if you do 70 for example so then i can get everything in the model so you can see the two reference points that exist then within the section assembly module within the assembly module so i'll click to create a set so this is reference point one okay set so that's what we're going to call that so i select that and then i'll do another reference point reference point to set so that will be for this point okay so the mesh has already been applied so in terms of the loading step so we can call this loading step so a static general is fine so once we have the loading step created then we'll now start thinking about the history output so the two reference points will form our history output so reference point one history output that's what i'm going to call it okay and if you think about what's happening in the reference point one so this is going to be moved you know shared in the x direction so i'm going to look at the set of the reference point one so the two variables that will be important will be the displacement in the one direction and reaction force in that one direction so that's what we need for that reference point then we also do the same for the other reference point reference point two history output and now in this case you're sharing in the y direction so a set would be reference point two so it would be u2 and rf2 for what's happening at that point so that way we are extracting history variables for those two reference points now the next thing we need to do is to do a constraint equation for connecting those two so i'm going to say constraint equation for rp1 okay it will be a star equation so if we then see what we are trying to do here so the coefficient here will be one then here will be minus one the reference point that we're looking at will be the reference point at the top here so this will be y top so the y top and the degree of freedom will be in the one direction one direction and the reference point one will be what we are using so we're using this reference point one to apply loading on the y top so you see there's a connection between this and that so we'll do the same with this other case reference point two connecting to that space so we'll create a constraint equation for it so constraint equation reference point two and that will require us again one minus one so this time around we're looking for the reaction on the front face so if i move this reaction on this x front so that will be x front in the two direction and reference point two would be what we require so that means we are moving applying load here and it's impact on what happens here apply load there and impacts on what happened that so that's fine and then we can then apply a boundary condition so what we are going to do is that i'm going to apply the displacement load displacement load in rp in the x direction for example um as a displacement so this would be the load that will be on this case so i'm going to link it to reference point so if i highlight that reference point one so and that means i'm moving it in the x direction i won't apply it a 25 percent a 50 percent displacement so for an edge length of 50 so 25 will give you a 50 percent um, loading so that means the load that has applied here is impacted on what's happening on that so that's displacement load x so i'll have a displacement load y as well so this would have to be applied to the reference point two and then it will be acting in the two direction again 25 will be applicable so you're applying the load you're applying there so this way you're combining the shear on this face and that face to create the deformation of interest and then obviously there will be faces that will have to be fixed so this comes back to the question that sati was asking which edge do you actually need to fix in this case because it's a 3d system you're not applying fixing an edge rather you're going to fix a plane so we're going to be interested in what's happening on this plane first and foremost so let's say okay so i'm going to call it fixed for reference point one so let's work with that and then it will have to be an initial boundary condition so this will now have to be if we just go back here so what we are looking to do is to fix the region for that so it will be free to move in the one direction but y and z will be constrained so that means we're looking at x back okay and one is the direction of displacement so two and three will be okay so these linear restraints are fine so what we've done here is that we've constrained this face so that it will move cooperatively in the x and y direction continue together as the system deforms in the x direction so we'll do the same thing again so i'm going to say fixed for rp2 okay so that is 
the one for the rp2 and if you think of what's happening with the rp2 here so we are the forming here so what will really be important will be what's happening at the base there okay on the x z plane because y z is the direction so we are looking at therefore the y bottom okay the y bottom is what is required and then we'll continue so the two will be direction of displacement so one and three will be what we need so everything is specified accurately the way it should be so we can then do the loadings okay so that's done and then we can submit that to run okay so this is a result that you generate after running that model so if we just animate the system slightly so what you see here is the deformation so they say initially it starts off with the system being this way and then the shear takes over and if you put the two together so you can see a shear deformation so this end is moving and that end is also moving so if we just slow this down a bit so you can see right right in the linear elastic region which is really the interest point we were interested in you see a clear shear deformation up to this point so if we go back and then so there is a shear deformation until plasticity kicks in so if we switch this to plasticity so you can see there's imbued presence of plasticity and so we're now in the plastic regime but the essence is to determine shear modulus and all that here so we've already asked for a certain history output to come out from the simulation so we're going to extract them so i'll just press down shift and select these four history outputs that we've selected now so what we're going to do with that is to say i'm going to rather save it just for now so i'll just save that data okay so it's been plotted and saved so if i go to my xy data i can find it so what i'm going to then do is to try and see if i can operate on this data individually and, and and find what we need so if we go back again operate on this data so i'll do a combine so what i want is u1 against rf1 so i'll plot that expression so i can rename this so i rename that and basically call it rf1 versus u1 and then we'll do the same so i clear the expression and while still in here use the same combine option now u2 against rf2 so again i'll plot this expression so i can rename the graph that is generated and call it rf2 versus u2 okay so then we can close everything and then right here so this is the first data the second one i'm just going to add it to plot so the two of them are together here as you can see then we can then do tools excel utility current plot so what i'm going to do here is to export this data into excel so this is a result that we found in excel so i'm just going to copy that here so ctrl c to copy so i've already formatted this excel file to receive that information so we just paste that here so what we find here is that this is u1 rf1 u2 rf2 just like we formatted it initially and then based on what we are trying to do so this is a strain in the 2 1 plane so and basically what this is requiring us to say the displacement in the one direction or the x direction divided by the, the the length in the y direction okay and the same thing will apply for shear stress the shear stress will be the reaction force on that one plane divided by the y and z directions so the same thing will apply here as well and then you generate that so these dimensions have already been supplied and then i put in how to calculate the data so basically the calculation of the data is the slope of that line or you know the tan inverse of that the slope of that line divided by two according to the equation that we showed before and then we end up with an average numerical strain of this value and this is the plot that shows what we have so here i've also included the young's modulus data for this isotropic material which is the same in all cases and then i've also used the calculation what will be the analytically determined value if the system didn't have the central hole or void in it and then we're getting a point four six seven so clearly there is a hole in this so that it kind of will affect the shear response of the system and this is why it's a little bit lower so what we see here is a homogenized shear response but what of a local shear response so if you go back to our course here so clearly what we have here is a homogenized response which is sort of what you want but what if you're interested in just what's happening in one of these red regions that has really seen a lot of plastic deformation so let's investigate that which is kind of like a localized shear stress response so if you look at this and say okay i'm going to do a, hist a field output so an integration point is fine so which element am i going to use so let's just say one of them here and then click done so that element is selected which variables are we interested so clearly we are looking at e12 because we are doing a share in the one two analysis and then an s12 again another value like that okay so we can plot that so it gives us 
a date two set of data okay so we've got these two data so again we'll do the same thing we've always done so tools plugin tools excel utilities so again current plot is what we want so we look at this current plot the first one is the strain data so the time and strain so i'm just going to copy this data which is the strain data put that strain data here and then go back to the excel sheet that we have before and get the stress data remember this first column this first and third column is basically time and we don't need it so we we'll put in that so you can see okay it comes across nicely and we get the plot nicely and then we'll also calculate the shear modulus and it's coming out at 0.467 which is exactly the same as with what the analytical situation should show you so it's coming out across like that what is the implication of that the implication of, of that finding is basically that you know when you do localized stress analysis you're more likely going to get the exact value but that's not a true representation of what's happening in the model what's really happening here is that there is a central hole in the system and so the shear stress will be affected and so it's important then to do to look at that and so this is what we've shown in this video so if you want to look at the original video that i made about to this system where i compared pure and simple share this is the video to see if you're so interested in other videos on abacus tips and tips this is the playlist for you thank you and see you <music>